Welcome to the Ski Moms Fun Podcast. as well. So what, what hat do you have for us today? I have one of our Avon Ski special hats. <gasps> Very oh, nice. Great. Good branding. So Thank Sarah you. and I, we've been looking into swag a lot lately. So you went with the knit cap. That's pricey. <laughs> well, these are limited edition. We mostly <laughs> wear them um, on the mountain. We do have a swag shop, but okay. the more you buy, the better the pricing gets. <laughs> You've got to you've got to have some storage then, Allie. Some storage again, limited quantities right now. We've done a few giveaways with them, which has been a lot of fun, and and we'll see if if I have to create more storage for more hats, that would be a good problem to have. High class problem. Well, um, as I said, we're recording, but welcome to the Ski Moms Fun Podcast. <laughs> Great to be here, and thanks so much for having me. You are um, our first guest, so we have tried the technology. <laughs> We feel, we feel good about that. Um, and now we're ready for the chats. So I want to start, I love, so we've asked everybody to give themselves a title and we will, um, we will do an intro with your official bio that will bookend this at the beginning, but we'll also say that Ali um, is known as the chief skier and schlepper at, uh, in her family and at Avon Ski. So welcome. Great to be here. Thank you again for having me. Sarah, do you want to kick off some, with some like background? Sure. For Ellie? Sure. Yeah. So um, let's just, we can just jump right in. Um, so um, I know, I think I read online that uh, you grew up in New Jersey. So where did you learn to ski? And was uh, Bon Jovi and Joel involved? That's right. <laughs> um, Bon Jovi was not involved, but was in the background a fair bit. I actually learned to ski at Okimo. We were lucky enough to have family friends that had a house at Okimo. And I had to wait all the way until I was eight years old, which was a little unfair because my younger brother, who's about five years younger than I am, got to start when he was not quite five years old. But I started at the right young age of eight at Okimo with these family friends. And my dad had skied a bit in college, but not, didn't really keep up with it until we started skiing as kids. And so he wasn't really comfortable enough to ski with me, but I started sort of between the legs of one of, of a very close family friend. So we did Okimo for a few winters. And then when I got to high school, I actually joined the ski team through my school where I spent a little bit of time at what was called Vernon Valley back then, now Mountain Creek. Nice. So, oh, and then you've, uh, what a great mountain to learn at, number one. I think they have an awesome waffle house at Okemo. Um, they do now. I don't recall that as part of my experience as a small child there. Oh, that's disappointing. Um, and I saw that you gave your gift the kids of skiing even earlier than you did. Yes, I did. I don't know if they would always call it a gift, although I feel like as they're getting a little bit bigger, they're starting to appreciate that I'm not just taking them out in the cold so they can freeze and have hot chocolate, but so they can actually enjoy the mountain. So it is, it's been a little challenging. I will, I, I always like to say, you got to be really careful what you're signing up for. I think my older son, who's now eight, but started when he was three and was lucky enough to start at Park City got what I would call the most extensive screening of the movie Frozen one afternoon after kicking and protesting and refusing to go out on the slopes. Yeah, that feels a little painful, but you know, it's all for the greater cause. For sure. It was hard then, but it's paying off in spades now. Yeah, we were, Nicole and I were uh, reminiscing about teaching our kids and thinking back about, uh, wishing that uh, someone had told us to lower our expectations a bit of the first few times and and that you spend more time wrestling them into their gear and bribing them with hot chocolate and candy or you know uh than actually out on the mountain usually but but it's all part of the process <laughs> it is part of the process and again my older one is, is he's just eight now but like just being able to see him start to go down stuff on his own or last season get on the chairlift by himself and kind of wave to me and like it, it's so rewarding that is so awesome how so old I, are, go ahead oh, sorry so how, how old are um both the, both your boys now my boys the older one is eight 
and my younger son Zach is will be five in December. Okay, so and they started when they were. Did they both start at age three? They did. They started at three. Noah sort of had a, I don't want to say slower start, but he was more on the one trip a year plan, mostly in ski school. I was a little bit hadn't started avant ski when Noah started skiing. Was a little less sort of comfortable with the whole thing with kids myself. I was very comfortable skiing on my own. And since we've had Avon ski and also with COVID last year and ski school being less available, Zach also started at age three and then spent a lot of time out there on the hills with me last year while he was four. So the, okay, great. so you, you've you brought up um, the, the reason that we're here with you today, which is Avon ski. I mean, we love that you're a ski mom, but so is there any tie between your experiences as a civilian ski mom and now being within the industry still think i'm, I'm a, a civilian and in the industry and yes 100 percent. i think what actually led me to leave the corporate world and start avant ski was being a ski mom at heart but also this realization that because you are a ski mom it's not sort of like your only identity i wanted ski moms and families and recreational skiers to be able to experience the slopes the way locals and insiders do. But having kids and skiing with them also just made me realize, one, it's really important to pursue the things that I am most excited and most passionate about, and to also be a resource for people that just love to ski with their families or without their families. I don't necessarily consider the two things mutually exclusive by any means. So what does yeah, Alvin Ski do? So Avant Ski is a relatively new ski media sites, ski and snowboarding. I don't want to leave out our, our uh, rider friends out there, especially those moms that have kids that are thinking about riding as well. Like that seems like a snowboarding also great to start young. Um, we make it possible for recreational skiers and snowboarders to discover new resorts that they haven't necessarily been to before, or maybe that they have and experience in the way locals and insiders would. So we have almost 70 guides to resorts all around North America. And we use the same templates, the same form. So you can think of us sort of as a credible friend that you can turn to for all the tips and tricks and advice to get the most out of your mountain experience. So we've got the resort guides, and then we also have a season pass guide. I don't wanna jump the gun too much, but that was sort of how the business started is you don't need to ski more than a few days a year to make good on having a season pass. And we can go more on season passes later, but wanted people to discover that season passes could be for them and then figure out the best ways to use them. So lots of uh, information and great content on our site. That's great. So, so one question I have is, and, and we've looked at some of your great, um, the different resort guides and all, but if, if you're talking to someone, um, you know, that's just ex looking for somewhere to go for the first time with their family, looking through some of the guides or say it was, you know, you picking a new place for your family, what do you think would be the top, you know, three or four factors that you consider right now in terms of like picking a, a resort to check out? For your with your family yeah it's a great question and i think that there's no sort of one size fits all for a family resort i think that we have um we have these great regional guides now we just rolled one out to skiing in california we have a guide to where to ski in new york um we have one coming out for boston and dc so i think some of it just comes down to how much do you want to travel so I, that's how i really like to kind of tailor my resorts if someone says i'll go anywhere in the country um, and maybe the, you know, the parents or at least one parent in the family is a seasoned skier. I really do try to look for a resort that sort of caters to everyone in the family. So on sort of a, a more national level, some of my favorite places for ski families would probably include Steamboat, just sort of little lower key, easy village to be at, great kids ski school, um, a little less ritzy than some of the other resorts in Colorado, still extremely nice. Deer Valley has been very nice to my children over the years, has an incredible ski school program. And then on the East Coast, I mean, my, my heart is still at Okemo. That's where I learned. I really like to say, if you learn on the East Coast and you can ski on the ice and all the different conditions out there, you can ski anywhere and you'll be all the better for it. So some of my favorite resorts in the East, again, if you are gonna, you know, down for that longer drive would include Okemo, 
and Stratton in Southern Vermont. And if you wanna go a little further north, then I'm kind of based in the New York area, Sugarbush and Stowe are really wonderful and Smuggler's Knot too, great for kids. So it's hard for me to pick. There are just so many great options out there mm -hmm. with great ski schools and so many like fun things like hot chocolate at the end of the day for the kids. So I think it's about picking a, a great ski school program, and sort of great. It's nice to have like a pedestrian village that makes things like easy at the end of the day. So Allie, how many resorts do you try to get to in a season or your writers um, and your, your freelancers, how many do you try to like touch and interact with to gather all of the data for Avant Ski? So one of the great things about Avant Ski is that we now have a team of almost 20 people based all around North America. I wish I could get to more of the resorts. I mean, I would say last season, because of the remote nature of things, I got to pretty much all of the, not all, but most of the resorts in Utah, probably seven or eight of them. Um, and then a handful. Last year, we did not actually make it to Vermont, the quarantine restrictions, it was tough. So typically- It sounds like, like you did not actually go to school if you made it to seven or eight. <laughs> I finished school. <laughs> I meant the kids, not you, Ellie. Oh, okay. And kids, we had a great setup and we got really lucky <laughs> that our kids had the option to do their schools that are in here in New York remote last year. And so we had some very early mornings, which presented their own set of challenges. But the beauty of it was that we were mostly done with skiing by lunchtime. And sorry, we were done with school. school. <laughs> yeah, the real learning began. We were mostly done with school by lunchtime. So feed the kids, which was essential. And then, you know, go out for a couple hours in the afternoon, which given the setup last year and the sort of inability to go inside and warm up, which just can be very challenging, especially with small children. Like it was great to be able to get out there for just smaller periods of time. That is, yeah, I, I love that you took advantage of that. And I, Sure, I'm just, you know, kind of joking, but I think that uh, the people who looked for the silver linings in COVID uh, were a lot of ski families. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys know this really well, but skier visits were really off the charts, sort of, I think the fifth highest on record and major, major increases from the, the season prior and the season before that. And I think just spending more time outside was really a major silver lining for a lot of people in the ski resorts really saw that and got a lot more people out, more traveling regionally than traveling further. And so our New York regional guide was, was really handy just for people to get a sense of like, where could you day trip from, from New York or where could you day trip from DC or Chicago? We happen to all the big regions and a lot of, a lot of day trips, which is a different way to do it. Um, but it no, really is there, are there any, I mean, there's nothing hidden from New York, but are there any of the smaller gems regionally that you would love to share with the community if you are in the, the New York metro area, are there any resorts that Avanski is sort of tapped as, you know, this is a, a little bit undiscovered and on a busy weekend is a, a, a good pick for ski families? There are, I'm a little worried if I put it out here that it won't be <laughs> as, as undiscovered, but uh, Platakill, which is not actually on a season pass, is a really great smaller mountain up in the Catskills. It has some, you know, not a lot of stuff, but there's some stuff at the base. They have eight great racing programs, kids programs. So that's just really a nice local spot that we like. Um, also really like Gore. It's uh, a little bit more of a drive from New York, but it's a little bit more mellow. It's not kind of as steep as icy as White Face is, and it's also just a great place for a family and for learning. All right, we won't tell anybody other than the thousands who follow along, yeah. but <laughs> other than that, it's our secret. So I know you, you brought it up a little bit before, but um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of, discussion around these multi-mountain passes I guess maybe the biggest are epic and icon but there are there are others as well um, I know you have some some guides and um, and uh, you know uh, ways to help people uh, maybe pick which one is the best for them um, I know that up front it can seem like a big investment when you see some of these uh, sticker prices and a lot of them come out in April of the prior year where they're trying to get you to sign up for the best price. But can you just talk a little bit about, you know, how you you think about these multi 
multi multi mountain passes and um, you know how they can really be you know a, a actually a great value play for families. Sure, of course, and that is a very good point that you bring up about doing it in the spring. And it's a little bit counterintuitive for those that aren't thinking about skiing like we are all the time. Is you know it's the spring. I want to think about spring break and what I'm going to do for the summer. And that is the time that you really can get the best pass, the best prices on the passes. Especially the Icon Pass is a great product because if you didn't have one previously and you buy it in the spring, you get the best pricing, which I think starts for the base pass around seven hundred dollars. Uh, for an adult pass, uh, less expensive for kids, but you also can get free skiing at select resorts starting in March the prior year. So we always have a spring skiing guide and that's always like one of the things we really try to mm -hmm. let people know because I think not everyone is, is always aware of that great value that comes from that. But the season passes, I mean, that's sort of what led me to start off on ski, which just as one who used to go to sort of the same handful of resorts on a very regular basis, mm -hmm. um, it was all of a sudden like, wow, I have the same pass and can use it to go to all these different places. How am I get to know them? But the, the, uh, the passes themselves, um, the two biggest are the Epic Pass, which is Vail Mountain Resorts and their partners, and then the Icon Pass which is Altera and their partner resorts. And those make up you know, most of the really big resorts. We also are working to expand our coverage of the Indie Pass, which is sort of all these, you know, the smaller mom and pop, but just incredible resorts and really great family resorts too. In, you know, some of them are in some of the areas we travel a lot to, Utah, Vermont, but they're also in Montana and Wyoming and really all- Connecticut. Over they've come together and that pass has gotten a little more expensive as they've added some more resorts, big names like Jay Peak and Powder. But that pass, I believe you can still get for $3.99, which is 80 days of skiing at you know two days at each of the different resorts. So that's another great way to get out there um, and explore different places. And then there's one other pass that I feel like flies under the radar, more for the traveling skier, the Mountain Collective, which is two days at each of, I think, 17 don't quote me exactly on that number. Um, things are always always in flux, but so there are really are a lot of different pass options. They are sort of complicated to figure out which one is for you. It's a question of where you want to go. The price point on the Icon Epic um, is a little bit less expensive than Icon. They reduced their prices to 2015 levels this year, which has been interesting. And while they've slowly kept up, so going a little all over the place, but the longer you wait to buy, the more expensive the pass gets. But if you get it early, or even if you get it now before the season starts, and you're planning to just ski for anywhere from five to seven days, depending on which pass you end up getting, you basically break even as we've really seen the resorts drop. Some of restricted day ticket sales altogether, and those that have it have really kind of driven up the price of the resorts to some places you're seeing more than $200 a day. So if you're just gonna go for a few days, like passes, so though. five days is the magic number. I, I think that's a good thing to stress. So once this, your yes. skier family is looking at that fifth day, sometimes it's even four days. I mean, if you're looking at Deer right. Valley for a single day in December, 240 a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So and I think just, the reason they can do that is because people are buying these passes. So tip skiing yeah. is expensive enough. You're starting at 240 before you've even done anything. Like it's, it's a deal breaker for most. Yeah. So that's yeah, good and for we, families, families to think about is budgeting that in, in the spring. And I will say one other thing um, that there's often summer benefits, just as a reminder, I love that you brought that up, Ellie, that there is spring skiing. A lot of times if you're a first time purchaser, but um, I know this summer um, I used my Icon Pass at Sugarbush to get free lift rides um, in the summer. So yes. there is there is value in that, and I think some of them get of a discount on mountain biking too. It's not free, but you know there's benefits that can be used beyond just the. And I think Epic gives you a benefit off some dining. As yes, well. so Epic Rewards, which you get with the Epic Pass, don't do anything extra, allows you 20% off of dining at uh, all Vail resorts. So, so your $20 French fries become yes. then um, $16. 16. <laughs> exactly. Still might want to think about bringing that brown bag, but it, but it is it is a little better. They also, the Epic Rewards also gives you uh, discounts for 
seasonal rentals, not seasonal rentals, but ski rentals. Like if you're going to rent for the day, I think you get a little bit of a discount on ski school and also a little bit of a discount on like tuning and like cleaning up your skis. And, yeah, there's uh, a lot of, what, Nicole, wasn't there a, a, a benefit? I thought, wasn't there even something at Sugarbush with the, with golf for Oh yeah, uh, icon yeah, pass yeah. holders. Season yeah. pass oh, holders no. got a free free yeah. round of golf. It's, thank you and for bringing that up, Sarah. Expensive. So I, mean, I think I think the point here like one day actually four hours. You know, at least skiing is a whole day, but a round of golf can, is one of the few things. Yeah, that, and it's a, it's expensive, but I think that there's just a lot of um, benefits like written into the different fine prints of these. Uh, different passes and if you really take advantage of them right if you really get familiar and I'm sure a lot of that's in your guides um, you can really like you know really make it economical and I, I always think that you know we've gone on some trips uh, to to watch our kids at races where maybe we wouldn't have bought a uh, a, a ticket a lift ticket for the day at the you know kind of market price um, because we were only going to be there for a few hours or maybe because of the weather, but with the pass, we just, why not? We just throw on our skis. Even if we end up making one or two runs, it just is getting us out there because it's essentially free at that point. <laughs> That's where like, if you have a travel day and you're only going to be there for the afternoon, you have a flight or a drive, like if you just go out there for a few hours, there's no incremental cost. And I think that, you know, especially the more you ski, it's nice to sometimes, it's great to be out there all day, but that's not always practical. And with the multi-resort season passes, especially with some of the resorts where you have an unlimited number of days there on the base pass, it's like definitely get some bonus skiing in. Another great benefit of these passes too, that's not that well advertised for those moms with small kids is um, kids under the age of five at the time the pass is purchased, also get free access to most of the mountains. So the Epic Pass, like for example, our son who was four last year, uh, he's actually three at the time we purchased the pass, skied at Park City, you know, without paying a dime. And the, the parent has to be, or an adult has to be a pass holder. But in a lot of the Altera partner resorts too for Icon pass holders under age five, the time of purchase. So if you have a kindergartner who's four in the spring, you should definitely get on getting that pass in the spring before that child turns five. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad right. you found and also. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm, also, I'm, I think, sorry, I was just saying, I think also going from 12 to 13 is another one of those points. And if you buy it in the spring and your kid's still 12, um, it's, a, it's a lower price point because it is, it is their exactly. age when you purchase it. So that I is a, a I, like I, I, pass holder program. I think it's uh, 13 to 17. Like they, they really tear it yes. up and right. You always want to get your last season. Uh, yes, at the, at the age, the younger age as possible. Exactly. Well, Ellie, I'm glad you brought up Park City. Um, that mountain is a monster. My kids love it. It's like a, for teenagers, it's amazing because there's a great village in Park City where they can go do stuff. And there was one point when we were living in Brooklyn, there were 17 kids from my daughter's class there at the same time. And the families hadn't coordinated. So I do love Park City for that very reason that it's it's you know a safe place for teens to kind of explore, but with the younger kids it can be daunting. So help us give us an avant ski take on how to navigate Park City. Like what are some of your must sees, must dos, can't misses? You've got little kids. Like help us figure that kind of big big resort out. So I think it is huge. I think it's actually the largest resort in North America now that they've combined Park City and the canyons uh, several years ago now. I think what the thing with Park City and the canyons is it's really important with small kids to pick one base as your home base and specific and definitely day by day. So there is a separate ski school. It's all one program, but when you have to choose where your lessons are going to be at Park City, you choose either the canyons base or the Park City base. Um, definitely, I've seen some people do this. You want to make sure that if you have multiple kids, you are signing them up for the same place for ski school. Um, and the daycare, I believe, is only at the Park City base. So if you have like really small kids, you want to make sure you sign your kids up for the ski school where the daycare is so you're not being pulled in various directions. We really like the canyon side for, for younger families. Um, there's a lot of lodging, like 
could ski and ski off or has access to a small gondola um, by Juniper Landing, which just goes up to the base. And then the kids just love being able to get on the gondola. So the learning area for kids is um, actually up at the top of the gondola. Um, they have to take the gondola back down. It's not super easy to ski back down from there, but the kids just love being in the gondola or the orange bubble chair connects over and they get up in the mountain. It makes it much easier to coordinate for, uh, for lunch or hot chocolate with people at the, at the mid mountain base area with the little kids. Um, so Canyon side, great. Um, there's a nice place, you know, kids can't stay out for that long. There's, um, there's an, well, actually, that's on the Park City side. So the Park City side, <laughs> jumping from the canyons, um, the Park City side is really nice for really small kids because you can drive right up to the base and there's a first time chair that's kind of not connected to the rest of the mountain. Like it starts at the base of the parking lot, take the chair up and that kind of goes to the main area of the mountain. That's easy too. You got to get there really early to get a good parking spot or come like late in the afternoon. But that's a nice spot because there's a nice coffee shop kind of right at the base um, that's owned by the same people that have uh, harvest uh, in the town of Park City where like after a couple of runs, you can go and have like a really quality coffee or hot chocolate or cookie with your child down there. There's a nice ice skating rink at the base of Park City that's a lot of fun. But just want to be clear, if you are staying in canyons for other stuff and you're going to go to the Park City base with your young children, definitely go there first thing in the morning and take your car. Um, in terms of places to, uh, to grab breakfast in Park City, we're really big fans of Five Seeds, which is like a, a quick drive from the base of the canyon to really great coffee. I really am a, I'm pretty particular about my coffee. It's essential as a ski mom to start the day with a good cup of it. Uh, but Five Seeds has great breakfast and avocado to toast, really nice spot to, to go before the craziness of the mountain begins. Um, for uh, Apre ski, like the kids love the Java cow in town in Park City. Everything is very walkable in Park City, which is nice. Um, and then we really enjoy going to the Blind Dog with the whole family. They have uh, for dinner in Apre, like they have a really great selection of sushi and steaks and, and great drinks, live entertainment. So that's a really fun spot for the whole family. And then there's a lot to do off the mountain too. That's one of the things that like kind of creates the richness of Park City. So it's really fun if you can make it over to the Olympic Museum. Uh, they had the 2002 Olympics in, in Park City. And if you go at the right time, you can walk through the museum, but you can also catch the ski jumpers, which is super cool. We saw them this summer jumping into swimming pools, which was extra cool. So this, uh, is, the this is the level. So we're getting the Avant ski experience here for Park City, but this is the level of detail that ski moms and boarding moms could find from your website, like these little insider things. So they would say before they're planning their trip, do you think they should visit Avant Ski before, during, and after? Like what's the best time in trip planning to make a visit to your site? So I think either, I think before for sure. Sometimes I'm a little bit like this with other travel guides. Like I like get a look, I get a cursory understanding when I'm thinking about where I want to go. And then once I'm there and I kind of want the nitty gritty, um, then you really want to have it. And we're very mobile friendly too. So I say, go to Avant Ski. What I like is if you go to a resort that you know, you can read up and, and hopefully you'll say, oh, okay. Like that, you know, they really, they know like that's, we have our, all of our opre recommendations are categorized by like grab beer with friends, take the family, have ice cream, stay for dinner. Um, this is where the locals hang out. And so we have these like highly curated lists but as you're kind of picking where to go, we have like an overview and the pros and cons, we call them let's go and hesitations of a particular resort. So you can kind of in a snapshot, get a sense of like the character of the resort. And we have, um, love to use the word, but we have a rating system for the same 10 factors uh, across all of our resorts. So kind of, you know, consistency of snow, we get like kind of into the, the details of the ski experience and how much extreme terrain there is, but we also have a ranking for family friendliness, and uh, what the opera scene is like, convenience of accommodations. You know, sometimes you get a really great resort, but there's like literally nowhere to stay within an hour, which can be challenging, particularly with a family. Um, and so that's kind of your cursory overview. And then once you've decided, okay, cool, like I definitely want to go to Sugarbush, then you call Nicole because she's, <laughs> but, um, but you, would, you would be able to really dive in 
and look at, we have a list of our top trails. So that, you know, that prior to Avon ski, if a new place, I'd get up there with my trail map blowing in the wind and be like, where should we go? And now like, once you're there, you just pull out that list and we have highlighted uh, trail maps with full day itineraries, literally like, I like to say they're sort of like the 36 hours someplace new in the New York Times, except it's just at the ski resort. And it's like, have breakfast here, get on this lift, take this run, and you know, go from there. So it kind of walks you through your nine to nine to five. Mm -hmm. So that, that 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 part is really good once you've decided to go or even there already. So I I so if a mom is or you know looking for uh, you know going on uh, your website theavonski.com and just poking around at the different guides, like are there any tools like? say I'm just, you know, I'm a, like, I'm, I'm willing to travel anywhere within the United States. Um, how, how, where do I start on the site? Do I, you know, just start reading or do you have any tools to help me narrow down based on my family and things like what, you know, things I'm looking for maybe? So we're working, we have a pass guide right now where you can enter where you where you're planning to go how many days by region or drill down by place and we'll tell you which paths to get um based on what you're doing with our resorts we have a, a section where if you go to our website now it says explore resorts and then you can sort and screen the resorts by region so we're right now we're, we're more more or less geographically focused on screening by region um and we are working on a tool this is in development hopefully we'll have it out before the end of the season where you'll be able to go on and actually use our rating criteria that we have for each of the resorts to say okay i really want a resort that is actually hard to reach has great extreme terrain uh and is also really family friendly i don't know if that exists but nonetheless you could pick your, your top criteria and then we might come back to you and say you know consider these three or four and then give you the links directly to the, that particular yeah. set of guides. That's great. That's very cool. And one other Is thing on that too, in terms of like the curation of them for our regional guides right now, um, we do kind of give them categories. So within our New York guide, we may say best for families, best for steep terrain, best for groomers. And so each resort kind of has like a, what it's best for. And again, we're, we're kind of splitting hairs. Like a lot of these resorts are good for a lot of things, but if you are looking for a little guidance to help decide, I think that's pretty helpful. That's amazingly right. helpful. I, I, and I have a lot of people you know, dropping into my DMs either on Facebook or Instagram, and they'll say, where, where should I ski with my two teenagers over President's Weekend? Um, and, you know, I often think, you know, uh, I take a deep breath, you know, where do you begin? Do you want to fly? Do you want to drive? You know, all of these, right, these exactly. things. Um, and you, of course, I don't ever want to give them any sense that they're annoying me because they're not. But I also want to make sure that they're getting, you know, what they want out of this. And it's such a vast array of options and it's expensive. So I'm very, I, I really don't want anybody to have a bad experience, you know, after they've spent all of this money. So I'm very careful with recommendations, probably more careful than the blind dates I set people up with um, <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Priorities. Um, okay. So we want, we have some questions that we ask all of our moms as they come on here, um, because as we're trying to build an industry that is more inclusive of women, more inviting to women, more celebratory to women. We know that there is like some particular pain points. Um, if you had a magic wand and you could change or like highlight something that you wish people would throw money at as an experience of uh, a ski mom, what do you wish like existed or was made either easier or in business terms because I know you have an MBA like the friction points how would you what would you like to see developed in the next few years so give me a Harry Potter wand we're like deep in Harry Potter in my house right now yeah. and I can just wave my wand around I mean I think a lot of the friction that comes from skiing in addition to it being expensive so if we could just get like some subsidies from somewhere to subsidize it for all of us but but really, um, I think it's just like, it's a lot. Like when I say Chief Schlepper, like it's a lot of stuff, especially like on your, your first time skier, or even if it's just your first time out for the season, like 
keeping track, especially as, as a parent, but like keeping track of all of your own stuff is hard enough. And then when you start having to keep track of the kids stuff too, and inevitably like a glove is dropped in the parking lot or like, didn't, you know, we've gone on ski trips back to Utah and realized like we forgot to bring the brand new pair of pants that we just got our younger son. Like it's, it's like, it's just a lot of stuff to keep track of. So I wish, you know, if I could wave on, like, it'd be nice if there was um, a way to just get to the mountain easier, almost like, you know, this is not a practical innovation, but like, we do have a checklist on Avon Ski of like a packing list, which I think has been hugely helpful to me and our family. So you can like check off the items, but just like a friendliness from the mountains to make it a little easier. You know, if you're doing drop off at the ski place in the morning, they're really trying to get, it's almost like the airport. Like it's like, you know, except at Deer Valley, I'm not going to throw them. I was the just going to say, <laughs> shout out to, shout out to Deer Valley. The first time I skied there and they took my children's skis, I was like, oh, oh, what's happening? You know, I was so excited. And then I have, I have one daughter who's a little bit pale and we forgot, um, we forgot to sunscreen her. And I love this Deer Valley story. We were, we were walking to ski school and I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll try to find another mom or something. And this very nice person came up to us and said, oh, may, may I help you? And I said, oh yeah, we forgot sunscreen. We're just going to go try and, you know, and they said, oh, would you like 35 or 50 and then you know the ski school guy like had double holster, holsters of sunscreen that he whipped out and I was like oh um we'll take the 50 and it was like beautiful sunscreen you know it went on smooth and I just knew like that nice it was gonna, on your own right yeah it was yeah. just gonna be a good day of skiing just when you just you felt like oh this I can I, I, I they got this it was great no, that's wonderful. And that's what it is. It's just, it's so hard to keep track of all this stuff. So, and I know it's not practical for everyone to do what Deer Valley does, but right. That's what you get for $240 a day. Exactly. You're paying, so. you know, you have to keep it in mind. This is what I paid for, you know, but if just there was a way for the resorts to make it a little bit easier to, you know, maybe having a little of the staff and the lifties that are going up top later in the day, like helping with the, with the loading and the unloading because walking across the parking lot with, I mean, it's not that far. I'm a marathon runner. So really I should not be complaining ever about walking across the parking lot. But when you're trying to carry all this different stuff and something gets lost in the shuffle, um, it just would be easier to have more drop off space and just more hands on deck. To help and I that. know um, I've seen wagons at, I know Keystone has wagons where they leave them in the parking lot. So you get them at the yeah. end of your parking lot, you get a wagon and you could put the child in the gear in the wagon um, <laughs> and drive, and you, you take them back up. And there's a, it's Pico, Sarah in Vermont also has the wagons. Um, so you, <laughs> you dump your toddler yeah. well, and all of their stuff in the wagon and you can pull it. So I've seen it at those two places Snow and Basin I, also, I was cited, this was a funny one, like running the Snow Basin drop off for one kid versus the other was in a slightly, it wasn't that far, but we know it was like 10 minutes apart, like literally like running with my younger son in a wagon with like all of our stuff, like through the crowd waiting for the gondola to get to the other side. Yeah, so I would like to Lackings see, a, really helpful. I would like to see a co-branded partnership between Ski Moms Fun, Avon Ski and Radio Flyer where yes. <laughs> they they supply wagons to the learning areas of all mountains so if someone who's listening to this could get on that that would be fantastic that would be fantastic they should become just not a will they have wagons just know they are going to be there yeah that's not too much to ask i love that that's a good so wagons for everyone if we're running for office that is going to be our um our campaign 100%. i mean i have seen a good kind of um, you know, a hack that's similar to that where people just have a big um, sled in the back of their car, right? That they pull out a plastic sled. I mean, not if you've traveled and you've been flying or something, but, and they just throw the bags and the kids skis and all and just pull the sled through the parking lot. That's so that's like a dead giveaway. That's like, a little that is a real ski family, probably Perfect. a local family, but that is, that is a hot tip if if you are local to an area for sure. Yeah. Um, and then, so we have a couple of questions just for you because not only are you a mom, but you're a badass skier as well. Um, and I will say that I know Allie is a good athlete because she has beaten Mr. Mom Trends in a number of games of squash um, over the years. Yeah, so 
Yeah, he's, he has very nice things to say about you and your athleticism. So um, what is your favorite type of run? Like, so you don't have to worry about the kids. You've got daycare lined up. You know, where is Allie going to spend her time on, um, a, you know, you just got a six inch dump of powder and the mountain is yours. So I do. It is true. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I like, I like a good workout. So I like to earn my turns as well. Um, and you know, my, my favorite thing to do is find someone and it's great to be in the business now. It makes it a little easier to just find someone who knows the place really, really well. And I don't mind hiking a little bit. So I'm always happy to kind of take off my skis and throw them over my shoulder to get like a few more steps up to get the fresh stuff. You know, if there's some trees in the mix, that's a lot of fun too. The trees tend to protect the powder. I don't like anything too, too narrow, but like, uh, you know, good sustained steep, deep pitch that, that requires a hike. So it's a little well protected is, is my favorite way. Much to my husband's chagrin. He is like, there are chairlifts. Why would you ever think about walking up the mountain? And when, um, so you and I, we make it, we're going to go apre ski somewhere. What, what would you be sipping? Probably apre ski. It's not always my real life drink, but uh, I'm a big beer apre ski. I feel like it's, uh, uh, you want me to pause that? Um, Hold on one second. Okay, great. I put my so Allie, you've just, you've hiked, you've now, um, you're making your way down the mountain. You're going to meet me at, at our favorite apre ski spot because I have not hiked. Um, what are you going to be <laughs> sipping at the end of the day? We're, we're by a big fire. I'm setting the scene. Um, oh. We're outdoors by a big fire. There may be some, you know, music going on in the background. What are, what are we, what are we drinking? Transport me to this scene right now. Um, I would say after a day on the slopes, it's not always my go-to beverage uh, in the rest of my life, but I, I'm a beer girl after a day of skiing. I feel like it's like a little bit hydrating. And before I really have too much to eat, just like a beer or two, whatever the local uh, brew is, is really one of my favorite things to do, opera ski. Nice. Well, hopefully we get to do that with you when you're up in Vermont this winter. Yes, I would love that. Very much looking forward to getting back to Vermont yeah. this winter. Well, this was so much fun having you on. And I have to say, just talking about all of this is getting me so excited to get out there, hopefully very soon. Um, so thank you so much. And I just wanted to end with just finding out how, um, how other ski moms can keep up to date with the latest from Avant Ski. Yeah, great. So we'd love for other ski moms to keep up with Avant Ski. You can head to our website, um, sign up for our newsletter. There's always a lot of hot tips in there, like more real time, great deals or updates on you know, where the snow is or what a great kids program is or special events going on. Um, we're also going to be giving away a pair of skis soon with our partner, All Red Skis. So sign up for our email newsletter to get information on that. And then of course, uh, come join the party on social media too, please. We have an Instagram account, uh, the Avant Ski. We are also on Facebook. We just joined TikTok, thanks to some uh, amazing summer interns we had this summer. So, uh, and we're on Twitter. So really any of those channels, um, Instagram is one of my personal favorites. We have a lot of fun on there, especially with the stories. Like find us up. We always share our latest new guides, tips and tricks, photos from our contributors and, and contribute to us too. Like send us your photos um, and we, we feature what our users are doing on our Instagram pretty regularly, which is a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank Wonderful. you, Allie. Thank yep. you. The Ski Moms Fun Podcast is brought to you by Mabel's Labels. Smart Ski Moms know to label everything before they head to the mountain. Every mitten, every boot, and every ski pole. Visit mabelslabels.com and use discount code SKIMOMS for 15% off your order.